I'm so thrilled to see you all tonight, and we have the great honor of having the co-director of Ernest and Celestine, Jean-Christophe Roger, here with us. So, a huge round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I am so honored to present the film in New York with you. Thank you very much for coming. My name is Maria Cristina Villasenor. I'm the programming director of the New York International Children's Film Festival. I'm so excited to see so many of you enthusiastic young fans. I know you're going to have a ton of really exciting and interesting questions for our director. So what we're going to do, the way it's going to roll, is that uh, Jean-Christophe and I are going to give you a little bit of time to think about some great questions. Um, so we're going to chat for a few minutes. And there are going to be microphones on both aisles little stand so we're going to have you all line up in about five minutes or so think about the burning questions that you have and then you're going to ask them to the director and uh, we're going to have a great chat so John Gustav first of all such a joyous ending I love this ending of joy justice being joy um, and what a, an intense uh, journey from Starting uh, with uh, Ernest and Celestine and working with your co-director, Julian Sheng. Um, and I think there's an interesting kind of parallel between Ernest and Celestine and their collaboration and you and Julian. So can you tell us a little bit about what it's like to make an amazing film like this with your co-director, how that process works? Oh yes, I think it's very related to the film itself, the fact to work as co-director. Uh, because uh, uh, Julien is uh, much younger than me, we are very completely different person, but we uh, agree to the destination, to what kind of film we want to do. So uh, we started to work together and we made the des determination to do everything together, not to split the work in two, but to make all creative decisions together. So we begin to draw the storyboard with four hands, and we made the core of the animatic of the film together. And we put music, drawings, everything together, and always discussing, challenging each other. And uh, I think that uh, behind some valuable uh, uh, art um, piece or work, uh, there is a kind of a personal uh, challenge and for this film, the personal challenge was to uh, surpass uh, each other's ego in order to listen to their, their opinion and to take in account the opinion and to discuss together in order to find a, a better way that we will agree on. So that's the way we worked for the film. We worked from the beginning to the end uh, that way, and uh, it was a wonderful experience. Tell uh, our young audience who may not know about animatics a little bit more about the process, what it actually looks like to work on drawings and then to develop the film. Uh, a film is not just drawing, it's uh, sound, music, uh, voices. So we, we, we try to find the rhythm, the core of the film, not only by drawing, but with adding a certain length to each scene, adding uh, voices that we recorded by themselves, ourselves. Uh, music, and we try to, f to, to build the story that way. In, we improvise the story by drawing, adding voice, changing the scripts, and, uh, try and find, finding the right uh, tempo and uh, the right emotions and uh, the balance between uh, uh, comedy and also uh, as a part. So tell us also a little bit about Ernest and Celestine, how you represent their relationship on screen. Obviously, their dynamic is at the core of the film. Um, so tell us about developing that story between the two. Oh, Ernest and Celestine, it's always about friendship between uh, two different people. And it's all, all how far can go uh, a friendship between two different beings. All stories are around that theme. And uh, in the film, we had, uh, we had the time to explore uh, that uh, theme further in, and to have a big uh, challenge for them, for the friendship, that uh, Ernest is stuck because of his family relationship. He's completely stuck and he, 
just push Celestine away and she should go, but she doesn't give up. He's, he's my best friend. He, he must be in a difficult situation. I'm going to help him. So she's a true hero. And it's true friendship that you don't give up your friend. And she solved the problem. And so by solving the problem of Ernest, she solves the problem of the whole country. So the film is always about uh, the, um, the power of one's life to uh, build his life and to change the environment. Yeah, it's it's a very deep film. It deals with some very important issues, you know, about justice, about uh, going against the rules when you don't think those rules are white, which is a, a hard choice to make. Um, so how did you balance sort of the seriousness and these important themes with getting the tone right? How did you come about bringing that to life? Uh, so uh, that's true that in this film it's kind of very um, some, some serious and deep subjects and uh, the family relationship and uh, the, um, the rights for children to build their own lives. Uh, but we try to do it in a way when we, t we try to find a balance so that it is, could be understandable without being boring. So we used musical sequences, we, we used comedy, and we tried to find a way that it would be understandable by uh, everyone. Absolutely. All right, I want to see some questions popping up, so let's start lining up if you have them for you. Um, and while we get you lined up, I'm going to segue into something that you all might be interested in. I know this pops up a lot. Um, but Jean-Christophe, uh, I wanted to ask you about your own creative inspirations when you were a kid. Do you remember a moment when you first started to think, this artistic life is for me, this métier is... Um, when I was a kid, my father bought a projector, a small projector, and he, he showed us some uh, very old cartoons. So that was a very, uh, it's a very good memory, and I always love drawing. It's like my natural way of expression, uh, better than speaking. <laughs> so uh, I came naturally to an animated film, but it was, I have a lot of doubts about my abilities. So it was difficult to make, there was, there was one moment I made the determination to become a director, to tell uh, stories and to do films for a young audience in order to inspire a uh, young audience. So there was a really uh, a determination for me and that was the start of everything. Amazing, okay. One last question and then I'm going to go to your questions. Why do you think it's so important to tell stories for young audiences? Why have you dedicated your career to films for young audiences? Because I think that uh, uh, when you are young, uh, when you make a decision that brings influence to your whole life, if you deeply determined to do something, all the strength, latent strengths that you have inside, physically, spiritually, comes out in order to achieve that goal. So it's very important to make decisions and to believe in your own potential. And this is the subject of the film, in fact. So um, I don't know how it is here, but in, uh, in my country, sometimes uh, young people are not always encouraged to develop themselves. It's common said that uh, it's better to find a safe way, that uh, it's too difficult. So. Uh, people are discouraged, but to tell the truth, the future lies in the hands of the young people. And it's very important that they believe in their strengths and they have a pioneering spirit to build uh, the future. That's, uh, the future lies in the young people. So that's why I want to dedicate my work uh, to, to young audience. Fantastic. All right, the future lies in you, and we want to hear from you, so let's start now. How did you come up with the idea for a bear and a mouse, a very unlikely pair, going on adventures together? Oh, the bear and the mouse, maybe you know it already. It comes from uh, Gabrielle Vincent. I don't know if you have seen books from her. Uh, she's um, a painter, a Belgian painter. She's dead now, but she has done 
about 26 books. Uh, to tell the truth, she was uh, originally a painter, and she took a pen name to work for uh, children, to do children's books, because children's books at that time, it was considered as a sub-art uh, compared to painting. So she <laughs> took a pen name, and in fact, because she considered children as the most important people, so she, she dedicated her life to, to that. And we, have, we are like the children of Gabriel Vincent, and we, we, we sing the same way, and we did the, the film with these two characters with the same uh, spirit. And why we, are, we choose to uh, take them to a trip, it's because uh, in all the books, and all the series that we made, uh, Ernest and Celestine live in a village, like it's like a Belgium or French village. But um, Ernest is a migrant. He's, he came from another country, and we don't know why he left this, his country, and we don't know where he's coming from. So the goal of this film was to show why Ernest left his country, and, uh, uh, and what is his country looking like. So because of Celestine and the broken violin, they, they go to this big journey to go back to the or original point and face uh, the situation. Thank you for your question. And I love how in the film, they're always joking about Celestine being the little, the little bear, right? <laughs> that was a great addition. All right, we're going to go to this side now. What inspired you to make Ernest and Celestine? Uh, so, uh, Ernest and Celestine, um, you mean the, um, the original Gabriel Vincent who invented the characters, or...? Uh, what inspired you? Or maybe uh, what, you what inspired you for, th for this film, okay. right? Okay. Yes. Okay, that's a great you. question. <laughs> Well, uh, in fact, it's uh, very a lot of unconscious inspiration, and uh, that we, you you don't mm, know. For example, in the film, you can see that uh, the birds the birds sing. They are the only people making uh, various notes in the shop in the gibberish. Here. So the color of the birds are blue and uh, yellow which are the colors of the Ukrainian flag. And the country a little bit looks also like a... Uh, so I have worked in Ukraine, and I also I have uh, previously uh, shown my last film, which was also Ernest and Celestine, in, uh, in Russia. And I got lots of inspir inspiration from that uh, experience. And it, we, unconsciously, we, we put all these things in the film. So there are lots of experience personal experience that we used, like for example the, the journey to Gibericia, it's inspired from, a, I made a trip when I was young to, uh, from the northern areas of Pakistan to China, for the Karakorum area, and it's completely inspired by my personal uh, journey. So there are lots of uh, things of me and Julien, Cheng, my co-director, that we put inside the film. For example, the, 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 the prison, we got the idea f uh, from Julien's studio. We were thinking about the film, and Julien's studio is exactly like the, it's not so big, but it's, it's, it's built just like the prison. It's like the prison. And we were thinking, <laughs> uh, 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 we, we will do like these two mountains, and uh, between the two mountains, uh, we build things. So we use every ex experience to, uh, Thank you for your question. So I hope you're keeping a journal to think about what you're going to make, your experiences. Yeah, everything, everything you leave is useful one day. <laughs> All right, right over here. Did you base off? Did you base a real place off of where Ernest was from, or was that just out of your imagination? Could you repeat, please? Did you base off Ernest's home on a real place? Uh, so a little bit what you were talking about, about uh, what the inspiration for Gibberish or Shravi was. For, for Gibberish? Like the country itself? Yeah. So um, 
Zuberisia is supposed to be the country uh, with uh, special laws that are not made for uh, people, common people. It's not based on uh, what would be convenient, so it's like a stupid, absurd law. It's not that. It not like it's like that, and not otherwise. So we have to build a country that was relatively close, close, not very open to the outside. So I reminded um, some valley in the Himalaya. There are some valleys, uh, for example, in the Karakorum, where it's so difficult to reach that place that it's people live there with a special language, culture. So, he, so I took that um, that inspiration to build uh, uh, Gibraltar, like a country between, very in the middle of uh, high mountains, and uh, the architecture comes from various inspiration. Like for example, in the, in Georgia, in Tbilisi, there are some old uh, areas and uh, with balcony and wooden houses. So it's. Uh, inspired by this. Also uh, in the Cappadoce in Turkey, we took various inspiration and tried to build a, a unique uh, environment for the bears. It's always with rocks and, and woods and uh, things like that. Does it answer your question? Yes. Thank you. Here we have a question. How did you um, make the characters of Ernest and Celestine? Oh, are you interested in like how they uh, came through the animation? No, how they got their character. So I think um, Gabrielle Vincent, who created the character, I think she took inspirations from people she knew. Like Ernest is supposed to be uh, someone that uh, Gabrielle Vincent knew personally, and who, someone who was coming from Eastern. Europe countries. So she also used uh, inspiration from her own life, her own friends. And uh, Celestine, I don't know exactly why she, uh, that's it, she's, she's coming from. But uh, the idea was to uh, make a story about diversity and to have two friends completely different. That's a, a big bear. Uh, that eats everything, and a small kind mouse, uh, very cute with lots of imagination. So the idea was to have a, a, um, an inseparable duo between two characters totally different. Is it okay? For... Yes. I have you. a quick question building on that. That was a very good question. I want to know about um, Celestine and then Mifasol. I think it's really interesting that these two female heroes are really at the center of the story. So tell us a little bit about developing Mifasol. Originally, Mifasol, it was not the, the sister of Ernest. We changed the script so much that <laughs> it was, they recognized what's, what's happening. It's, uh, it was a surprise. So the idea, um, the idea was to build um, for me and, and Julien, uh, Anna and Celestine, it, it, it's not because it's a film for uh, a young audience that we should not have deep um, uh, characters. So for us, it has to be completely re realist, re believable that Ernest gave up Celestine to become a judge because it's, it's uh, almost impossible to believe that he will accept to become a judge. So we have to be completely stuck in a situation that he is obliged to say yes because his sister is in prison and uh, the whole family will destroy because of, of him. And also he feels responsibility, responsible for the, the, the music being prohibited. So he feels all this responsibility. So he is completely stuck in a situation that he he, he comes to a break with his best friend. So because of that, we made Mifasol be his sister because she's the hero, she's the resistant, but she's the daughter, and that, and that makes sense that Ernest wants to save his uh, sister, and that also makes sense 
that the sister, the, the uh, Mifaso, Mila, she will save her father at the end. So that makes that, that uh, complete, uh, complete, it makes the uh, story complete in the family. That uh, Everybody kind of has their bravery and is a hero on one. And uh, overcome their, yeah, their weak points. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Okay, we have a question. The characteristics of Ernest and Celestine, are they based on anyone in particular? Oh yes, uh, I, what I know, from what I know, Ernest comes from uh, a person that Gabriel Vincent, uh, the author of the books, knew, and maybe she loved that person. Uh, it's not, I, I'm not uh, in her in her heart, but uh, it said that it's some somebody that comes was important for her. Okay, we're going to try to speed through a few more questions because we're starting to wrap up our time, so right here. Yes, so um, why are you blocking music, especially like why music? Um, well, why don't you like music? Like? Well, music, it symbolizes the, the freedom, the expre expression of oneself through uh, art, and it's... Uh, Music is very important in in a, in a film itself. So uh, we use the music to make um, nice musical moments where you want, you you feel like dancing, and also we can use the the music being prohibited for comedy, like uh, people playing a concerto with only one note. So it talks about uh, autocracy, but in a funny way. If, if, if there was no music at all, it, was, it would be just sad. But it's now it's ridiculous, because you can just play one note, so that makes the thing funny. So we use the music for several, you know, several ways to, to build the film. In fact, we worked with the composer. It's a very good question. It's, we worked with the composer from the beginning of the, of the work. Just me, Julien, and uh, we discussed with the composer, and he started to build to make the music from the very beginning, to incorporate in the animatic. Okay, I think we have time for two more questions. Maybe, so. yes. Are um, Ernest and Celestine just friends? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, what a question. <laughs> We're going deeper and deeper. <laughs> It's funny because uh, maybe you've heard the song at the end. It's a song. It's it's uh, the singer is uh, she's called Pom. She's very famous in France, Pom. And uh, at the beginning, the words of the song it was a, a love story, completely a love story. Because we talk with her, she 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 made the song, she wrote the word, the lyrics, and the music. And for her, it was completely a love story. So we discussed about that because. There are several levels of relationship. You can say that uh, it's a father and son relationship. You can say it's a friend's relationship. And you can say it's a, it's a lover uh, relationship. And uh, I think that uh, I cannot say that one is... Uh, it's, I think it's all of them. And because of its animation, and it's a bear and a mouse, we. We, we can make that uh, ambiguous <laughs> uh, kind of relationship without being uh, problematic. Or... But I, I, I'd like to know what you think about it. <laughs> yeah, what's your answer? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody gets to decide. Okay, over okay. here. So, um, how many people does it take to like, make the whole animation? Oh, the total team is about 100 people, and uh, only animation. It's uh, it's a very special way of uh, making animation. Usually, there are people that are doing rough drawings, people cleaning, people uh, it, with Ernest and Celestine technique. It's one people, do, one person doing the whole scene by himself. So we have about maybe 25 animators, uh, women and men for the animation itself. 
Thank you. All right, I saw you two waiting so patiently. Do you think you can gang up and ask your questions quickly? Okay. Let's start with you in turquoise. put you on the spot. Film, uh, the meet, there is uh, the, the meeting between Ernest and Celestine before they know each other. Ernest uh, is hungry; he wants to eat, so he is uh, uh, he is looking into the, the garbage. And in the middle of the garbage, there is a small mouse that he oh uh, he wants to eat. And the mouse says, no, 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 you are not <coughs> going to eat me. What are you doing? So that's the way, that's how the, the friendship uh, began. So, and we don't know exactly the background of Celestine. We know she's an orphan, uh, an orphan. That's, uh, there was a book of uh, Gabriel Vincent about that story. But we don't know precisely more things. But maybe in a future film. <laughs> How do you choose like what they should say? Wow, great question. Uh, oh, no, it's, uh, uh, first of all, there is a script written, approved by a producer, distributor, and uh, and we start to work with this with this script. But when you, we do animation film, it's not really working that way. It's a visual a film. So we draw the story and we change it because it doesn't work. Uh, a script is a script. So sometimes we you, you, we have to to change and to find a way to tell the story. Sometimes there is a written uh, full sequence of dialogue, and when you see in the film, for example, when when Ernest is depressed in the beginning, when the violin is broken, there is a whole sequence without any dialogue, and it tells the story that. Celestine determined to go to Gibraltar. There is no dialogue. It's only written by uh, uh, scenes uh, and music. So it's the music and the drawings that tell the story. So when you, we worked on the, on, the, on, the, on the film, we tried to find the best way to tell each story. So sometimes we change the dialogue, sometimes we didn't change, sometimes we remove dialogue and we put music.